Mr. Kvarstovski, could you first tell us uh, where did you come from to Helsinki now and where are you continuing after the concert? I've, uh, I've arrived from Moscow where I was, I was doing some promotionals, uh, some interviews, some rehearsals before uh, my two big concerts, uh, the series of Kvarstovski and Friends, starting in two, three days, and first concert in St. Petersburg and second in Moscow with my friends Ramon Vargas, Barbara Frittoli, uh, Ildar Abdrazakov, Askar Abdrazakov, uh, Katerina Gubanova singing along with me uh, and many other participants and of course Konstantin Orbelian is going to conduct both concerts and uh, the venues are huge we will sing in Winter Palace in uh, St. Petersburg which is an I stadium and uh, in Kremlin Palace and in Moscow. So it, it, it's going to be very, very huge. And, and, and also it, it uh, kind of, a, you know, my, my birthday anniversary uh, concerts too. So it, it will be a lot of, a lot of uh, attention from public and press. But did you have time to winter holidays at all? Winter holiday, I took winter holiday uh, for about 10 days and where I spend spend them with my family. Okay. And London. where was this? In London. Okay. Mm. So, Mr. Kvarastovsky, could you tell us about your new CD, which contains the leader by Tanya Jeff and Tchaikovsky? And the oh, it's a. Uh, how did you choose the repertory? It's it's just uh, uh, how did I choose? I I've, I've recorded what what I've been performing and what's uh, and it is one one of many programs that I I felt obliged to uh, to make a recording with my uh, wonderful pianist Ivari Ilya mm. who is originally from Estonia um, we made quite a few uh, recordings so it's it's one of one of those few uh, few recordings that uh, has been released recently and I heard that you have plans to record also in Finland could you tell us more what kind of plans? Do I have plans? Yes, I do, because uh, with uh, on Dean we have plans to record uh, uh, opera music with an orchestra. With the Helsinki Philharmonic? Yes, okay. and so we'll, uh, we'll do it uh, hopefully this or next year. Okay, right. Mm. And then your fine voice is very well known, and it is said that it's among the best voices of the century, maybe two centuries already. Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Do you remember the moment when you just realized that you have a special material? Was it yourself or some teacher who told you? You have a great voice. Well, I, um, I wasn't sure about my voice to begin with, but I, I was quite sure that it was something about performing. Um, to me, it was never easy to to open my mouth and sing in front of somebody, in front of people or audience. I always had to overcome something in my natural shyness or, uh, or uh, my fear of uh, singing in front of uh, unknown people. Uh, so I had to do something like, you know, step and, and take off and fly. So fly and and float under the reality. Okay. Uh, be uh, the reality. Take off from from the ground, from the soil. And so in that case you you'll feel inspiring. Hmm. Inspired. And in that case, uh, a voice and everything else will come together and it will make boom, a big emotional impact of a performance, of singing. So that's been always a challenge and difficulty at the same time to me. It still is. Because nothing comes easy out of this. In order to sing, you have to, you have to fly. <laughs> but you also have a huge charisma on the stage. 
how do you do it, or have you studied some kind of theater or presence on the stage? You know, presence either here or not. <laughs> you can't. You can't really learn how to uh, make your presence bigger. Your presence comes with the package. Well, for instance, your eyes are moving in a very uh, interesting way when you are on, on the stage. Have you studied them, or is it only a talent to? Like no, I never studied moving my eyes. <laughs> I only studied that if you continue, um, if you hold a high note, yes. you're supposed to go around the house slowly, like this, in order to keep this note as long as you can. So take the long, long, long journey. But it's, it's the only thing I studied about okay. <laughs> moving your eyes. Otherwise, no, no. Of course, I studied the acting and fencing and and moving on stage, uh, but just like everybody else. And uh, uh, what helped me that I I took off singing on stage from a very early age. I was lucky to to be invited to work at. Uh, at the uh, Opera Theater in the age of 21, 22. And ever since I've had such a privilege to, uh, to be working at the Opera House and, and privilege to, to be you know, known and sometimes admired by, by the audience. And it's such, a, such an incredible advance mm -hmm. that you have. Uh, Mr. Hvarostovsky, you live in London, but uh, you come from Russia. Do you have some kind of an opinion uh, on Russia and its um, si uh, situation now, the political situation in Russia? Oh, don't ask me about it. This is my pain, <laughs> disappoint and, uh, disappointment and, and, and uh, also my hopes, because uh, in front of my eyes uh, you can observe, you can see big things from distance, sometimes much better than people who live in this country. Because I've always had an uh, opportunity to uh, make a comparison with uh, other countries, with this country uh, growing and developing in a certain way. Uh, not everything pleases me. And a lot of things disappoint me, but generally I, I, I love my country and, and I, I wish it very well. <laughs> I wish it uh, happiness and, and prosperity. And like I wish all the people to love each other and, and love music and classic music and classic art. That what helps and then what will make these people survive throughout all the collisions of the uh, uh, reality. And uh, sometimes politics are not necessarily reflecting what the real people think and, and feel. And uh, I certainly can tell about the recent steps from uh, the government and <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and, uh, but do you know personally, for instance, Putin and Medvedev, because you are performing at the Kremlin Palace? <laughs> I've, yes, I've, I've, I've shook both presidents' hands, and, okay. and uh, I've had a little conversations with uh, each of them. So, but I can't tell that I, I know them very well personally. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't have that privilege. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, could you tell us what kind of hobbies do you have? Hobby. Uh, I work out, I do sports, and, and uh, you know, I'm very fit for you know, being, uh, being a singer, mm. <laughs> particularly being a singer. Um, I'm quite strong, and, uh, and I keep it this way. I, I like reading, I like uh, listening to all types of music. Um, sometimes I, I like to uh, watch movies, mm -hmm. and uh, sometimes I like to watch uh, stupid movies. Okay. Uh, For instance, just to actions, actions okay. mm, just in order to relax my brains. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
I like classic uh, uh, literature. Um, and uh, what else? I like art. Um, and besides, I, uh, before becoming a musician, my, my parents had a dilemma whether I should become a sculptor or a musician. Mm -hmm. Because I've obviously, I've had the same talent for uh, art, for uh, sculpture. Interesting. Which I kind of uh, forgotten. And only recently I, I could restart doing something, either in the sand or uh, Lately, I, I made a, a very controversial figure instead of a snowman in the snow. Mm. A very contemporary figure. Okay. <laughs> Just for my, to, to make my children laugh. Okay. Did mm. they? Yeah. Mm, kind of. Kind they, of. They smirked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I think they didn't get it. <laughs> 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 okay. Well, thank you very much and have a good concert. Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you.